all right good morning so i just checked out of my hotel and uh the process was very ineffective um, and what i mean is i was supposed to check out at 650 and it's okay but i came down to check out told the gentleman at the front desk hey i had one bottle of water and one bag of chips and he said okay let me tell someone that you need to check out and so he goes on the walkie talkie and he tells someone and I'm thinking that someone is in the same building that I'm in. Nope, he's not. <laughs> Five minutes later, he just comes strolling in from another building, goes up to my room and uh, checks the room. And I ask like, what are you checking for? He said, oh, we need to make sure that the TV is not broken. And then we need to verify the things that you said are missing, are missing. So whatever, it took about 10 minutes to check out. Um, so point is bake that into your time if um, you're ever at this hotel and you need to check out anyway we got our breakfast boxes now <laughs> uh, um, and we're gonna grab some coffee and we're gonna head to the market oh look there's our bus The first place we visited this morning was the famed Aloke Mayo Market, a market that is home to Bogota's biggest selection of exotic fruits, fresh vegetables, and food stalls. It's similar to a giant flea market in that it not only had goods from local farmers, butchers, and florists, but also goods from homemade basket weavers and other vendor specialists. Danny explained to us that many Colombians in Bogota still prefer to shop here than at the grocery stores. We spent the bulk of our time at a fruit vendor store. We learned about his family, about the different fruits sold in the area, and even watched his team prepare a few fruit salads. Fricoa, do you know how is it fricoa? You know? It's like cassava or something. Yes, you know what is the sour sauce? This is tomato tree. It's like a tomato, but it's a sweet tomato. Yes, it's really, really delicious. This is my favorite food for the juice. And this is Lulu. Do you know the Lulu? Yes. This is an acid fruit and it's excellent. The most memorable event was trying ice cream with cheese. I'd have to admit, it was pretty good. Before leaving the market and heading to the airport, we ate fresh arepas at one of the local restaurants and then stopped at a local vendor's shop to purchase souvenirs. so I just made it through security at the Bogota airport and it was a very interesting and different process for sure so first off as opposed to the United States you don't have to remove your liquids from your bag but the most interesting thing was that the entire process was like self-check or um, self-service even the bag drop you just scanned your bag um, 
and put it on a conveyor belt and your bag went off <laughs> to the ether somewhere and then through security like there's no TSA agent you just scan your boarding pass after you scan your boarding pass you walk through the gate and then you go through the um, the metal detector so that part is still part of the process so now we're about to walk to our gates and wait to the gate we board at um, 10 25 and we take off around 11 30 and we'll end up in Salento Get off the airplane and touch down in Pereira, Pereira. And um, now we're gonna meet our bus driver. And we have about an hour drive to go to the town that we're gonna go in. And once we get to the town, we're gonna have lunch. But I'm pretty hungry now. I'll see what the airport looks like, see if it has a snack. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, the flight wasn't too bad, it was only at most an hour, I didn't time the entire thing. But, um, and it also wasn't the most comfortable. <laughs> there was no knee space, not much at all. But we made it and we're gonna wait and we're gonna make it to the next spot. After an hour drive, we made it to our country, Hacienda. And um, I don't know if I know what to think yet. Clearly there's no um, AC in these type of rooms and I see bugs flying around my head. So I imagine this is gonna be a, a country, a country-ish uh, stay, a country type of stay. Um, but I wanna make the best out of it. I'm gonna eat some lunch and we're going to see what happens. As you can see, the rooms were outside and nope, they did not have air conditioning. They did get a little bit warm at night, but I dealt with it.
Once we all checked into our rooms, we went up to the restaurant for lunch and the host was a wonderful host. He actually gave us a tour of the hotel, which is the home for his family. And he explained how he built it over a period of about six years. And he also showed us his gardens and all the places where he pick his local food. I would say that the meal at the restaurant wasn't the greatest, but it's probably by fault. Trout is the local food in the area, so they probably are great at cooking trout. But I ordered chicken breast and the chicken breast was a little bit overcooked for my taste. But I was hungry at this point, so I still definitely ate it. After lunch, the group walked around to explore the town of Salento. I decided to opt out of this tour because I wanted to walk around the town myself. And if you're interested, I'm going to release my entire walk around the town of Salento in a separate video on this channel. Our tour group spent the rest of the evening in the basement of a local bar off the beaten path where we were the only tourists. We drank beer and played one of Colombia's national sports, a game called Tejo. I've never heard of this game before. And if you're not Colombian, you probably never heard of it either. It's kind of like cornhole. But instead of throwing a bag of beads into a hole, you're throwing weighted steel discs towards a metal ring that is rigged with gunpowder stuffed mechas, which explode on impact. I must say, this was a pretty cool experience. Check it out. Almost, that's good. Almost. <laughs> you have to move more for this side. <laughs> Look, this is going to explode. After about a half hour of trying to get a recording of one of us making the mecha explode, we finally got a recording of me making one of the mechas explode. Check it out. After about an hour of playing Tejo, that was that for the rest of the night. Everyone went back to their rooms to prepare for the next day's early rise. But of course, restless me convinced Danny, our tour guide, to walk around the town for some nightly people gazing and to get this wonderful shot. Afterwards, although Danny returned to his room, I still ended up walking around the town some more before finally settling down in the streets with a Diet Coke doing even more people watching. In the next day video, I'll showcase the five hour hike we went on the next morning and then the drive that took us to a coffee ranch in the evening. It is at the coffee ranch where we learned everything there is to know about coffee. So I can't wait to share that with you. Until next time, remember, go out and go travel. You have everywhere to go see.